Welcome again to another video from Scatter in the Light Ministries. And today we have some information we want to share with you from the Word of God. But before we open the Word, let us kneel together while we pray. Our Father and our God which art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy and matchless name. We thank you for another opportunity to study your words. And we pray for your Holy Spirit presence to be in our midst and to take possession of our hearts as well as the viewers' hearts. Speak to us clearly, and may we repent and turn to you before it is too late. Please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, so if you have your Bible, please go with us to Matthew chapter 24. Jesus spoke things that would have taken place in our world when he was here on earth and i can tell you friends we are actually seeing them fulfilling today and this is where we want to draw your attention so matthew chapter 24 verses 4 through to 8 and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you you see that friends so jesus is saying take heed that no man deceive you so that simply means many are thousands millions will be deceived so jesus wants to draw our attention to a particular word let us go on for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many and we have seen that and you shall hear of wars hear of what wars yes and rumors of wars yes see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet the end is not yet over here now russia and ukraine is at war and now we are seeing a war between hamas and israel yes friends so jesus's prophecy has been fulfilled mm -hmm. and here it says the end is not yet but back up a bit it says he be not troubled. Mm -hmm. Friends, the final war before Jesus comes back will be the war against the law of God, mm -hmm. especially the fourth commandment mm -hmm. that has to do with his seventh day Sabbath. Yes, friends. So all that we are seeing, the wars, and we hear of rumors of wars, it's actually fulfilled the prophecy of Jesus. Let's go on. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Yes. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Yes, friends. So note, so after you have wars, then we'll have what? Food crisis, famine refers to food crisis so jesus is saying after food crisis mm -hmm. what will come next pestilence Pestilences. and what is pestilence deadly, deadly diseases and we have seen that mm -hmm. just recently the pandemic the COVID. yes mm -hmm. and then we are seeing earthquakes in diverse places different places yes. and even here in jamaica a few days ago we felt an earthquake but thanks be to god we didn't suffer any loss mm -hmm. so our heart goes out to those who have been affected by these wars in the past and even the wars that are taking place right now. But we want to draw your attention to a particular quote from the book Great Controversy that it is Satan who delights in wars. So you're going to see the reason why Satan is the one who delights in wars. Satan delights in war, for it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped in vice and blood. You hear that, friends? So if you and I are at war, there's no love amongst us. We are what? Expressing hatred. And so when you kill me or I kill you, it sweeps us into eternity. You know what mm -hmm. that means? We will die in our sins. Mm -hmm. 
and be lost forever. So that is why Satan is the one who is behind all these wars to cut people off in sin wherein they are hating and hate is not of God. God is love. He wants to kill us in our sin so we will be lost forever. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another. You hear that friends? For he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. So you see, our work of preparation right now, Hebrews 4 and verse 16 tells us, come boldly mm -hmm. to the throne of grace where we can obtain what? Mercy. Mercy and help in time of need. So God is in the most holy place, pleading on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is officiating right now as our mm -hmm. high priest. Mm -hmm. And that's where our focus ought to be. But the enemy is stirring up nations to fight against each other. This is a distraction. And then we die in our sins and we are lost forever. Mm -hmm. So friends, we need to understand that Jesus is doing the final work re our salvation and probation will soon be closed and therefore first timothy 5 24 tells us our sins must go on to glory mm -hmm. so they can be Blood blotted out, out. Mm -hmm. and we can be a perfected people you know in revelation 7 we are seeing four angels holding what the four wings of strife mm -hmm. which means what wars until what? The servants of God are what? Sealed in their forehead. Page 287 of Faith I Live By said, Just as soon as the people of God are sealed, it is not a mark that can be seen, but it is what? A settling into, in, the truth. in the truth of mm -hmm. God's word, friends. Mm -hmm. And when we are settled, we will become unmovable. We cannot be moved. Yes, God. So when we see all these things happening in the world, it is an indication that the angels are letting go and it's also an indication that God's sealing is about to be closed and therefore we ought to ensure we examine our own heart and give our life to Jesus before it is eternally too late so friends we want to talk about the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac and that is why we are seeing the problems we are now seeing in the world. So if you have your Bible, let's go again to the book of Genesis. And let's pick up at Genesis chapter 12. So in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy what? King Jordan, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And bear that word in mind land right mm -hmm. and here it says god will make of him a great nation and he will bless him and make him a, a name great and thou shalt be what a blessing and he will bless them that bless thee curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed and then god said that abraham should what take his family and leave the land of um, Chaldeans. This is a type of Revelation 18. So Abraham received a call to leave Babylon. So God's people in these last days will also receive a call to leave Babylon. Mm -hmm. Go back to Genesis 11, friends. The word Babylon came from Babel, mm -hmm. that represents what? Or means confusion. confusion. So the world is in a state of confusion and is being controlled by spiritual Babylon. And God is saying, You need to get out so you can offer me true worship. Don't be partakers of their sins. Because mm -hmm. those who participate in the sins of Babylon, spiritual Babylon, will receive the seven last plagues, which are what? The wrath of God. So here we are seeing that Abraham received a call to leave Babylon. You today, if you are in spiritual confusion, religious confusion, God is calling you out. And he's saying, come out of her, my people. So God has his people everywhere. And he's calling. Will you accept his call? 
So note verse 5 of chapter 12 of Genesis that God told Abraham to take his wife. And who was his wife? Sarai. Yes. So please note that, friends. And Lot went to them. Pick up that verse 7 for me, please. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed. Unto who? Thy seed. This means that he would have a what? A child. Mm -hmm. And we know that he would have a son. Mm -hmm. Because God told him that he would have a son. Exactly. So God is saying that you will have a child mm -hmm. or you will have a son. And what will God give that son? I will give this land. All right. So note, God told Abraham, leave where you are. You and your wife, because remember, he was married to who? Sarai. So if God is saying that you will have a son, you will have a child, you will have a seed, what was God saying? His wife, Sarai, would have bear him a son. Exactly. And mm -hmm. he would give that son what? The Inheritance. land. The land. Yes. Read on. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Amen. All right. So this is just to lay the foundation, friends. Let us go forward now to chapter 15 and we can pick up at verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? You see that, friends? So as we saw in verse um, 7 of chapter 12, mm -hmm. that God promised Abraham what? A seed, seed mm -hmm. which is a, a child, which is a, a son. Mm -hmm. And now here Abraham is saying, God, I go what? Childless. Child so are we making the connection? Seed, child, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. go on. And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. You see it? So he said, Childless. No children. And then he said, Seed. Right. So I hope we're making the connection. Go on. And lo, one born in my house is my hair. You see it? So he's saying that one that is born in his house is his hair. Yeah. All right, move on. Verse and four. behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in thine hair. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine hair. All right. So. Here, Abraham was thinking that he should have had a child of this person that was mentioned in verse 2, Eleazar of Damascus. But God is saying, no, mm -hmm. a child or the seed shall come forth out of thine own bowels. Mm -hmm. This person shall be heir of what? The promise, yes. which would be the land. Yes. So what we are seeing here, if he is married to mm -hmm. Sarai, mm -hmm. That simply means that seed of promise should come through who? Sarai. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm happy you're following me. Jump over to verse 18. Same verse chapter. 18. Yes. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. You see that, friends? From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Amen. So we are seeing that this covenant mm -hmm. was made between abram and god and god mm -hmm. that he would have had a son a son mm -hmm. and this son would have received the land mm -hmm. and notice where egypt where you have the, the great so this is now in the middle east okay i hope you're following me mm -hmm. and this era of this promised land that they travel from his descendants from egypt to Canaan, today is known as Palestine. Okay, okay. So let's go on, because we are going somewhere, friends. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are going to see now the first child of Abraham. If this child was the, 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 the promised seed, we are going to see if this child was the seed of the inheritance. Let's go on. Mm -hmm. So we are now in chapter 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Agar. Hmm. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. 
and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Oh boy, I tell you, this is so deep and serious. No, we're getting in deep waters now, friend. Mm -hmm. So, God had made the promise to Abram, which he would have related to his wife, yes. that they are going to have a son. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine God had promised you something, friends, and you wait, 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 no promise? Then what is the, the, the next step? Wait on God. Yes. But that's not what we do. We tend to work things out for ourselves. Because you see, God has an appointed time. So exactly. we have to learn to wait on to God. To be patient. God, yes, because that's one of the characteristics that we need to have the character of Christ, which is patient. Exactly. So what we're seeing here, that in verse 2, Sarah is saying that God has restrained her from bearing. Mm -hmm. And she is telling her husband, go in now. To Hagar, right. and the Bible says, Abraham, listen, mm -hmm. husbands, be careful mm -hmm. of friends, husband, be careful of what your wife tells you to do. And let me flip it quickly, wives, be careful of what your husband tells you to do. Whose voice should we listen to? God. Exactly. We must always hearken, listen to, to the voice, voice of God. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Agar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. So you notice it says ten years. Yes. So they have been waiting a while. They have been waiting a while. Right. And, and, and what was the total amount of years they waited? For the he, promise he thing. waited a total of 25 years 25 years is not no short time to but wait. it's just like oh we are waiting on the promise of canaan land the heavenly canaan we believe god and therefore we should keep our eyes on the prize amen mm -hmm. so the friends some people tell you from their eyes were at their knees meaning they were children and now they are adults and jesus hasn't come but in hebrews 10 we are told he that will come will come and will not tarry and in Matthew 24, 44, we are told to what? Watch. Hmm. He therefore, lest when he think not the Son of Man coming. Hmm. So we must be living each day in a state of readiness for hmm. what Jesus is appearing. So we need to be patient. Hmm. So here we are seeing Abraham now have how many wives? Two. Two. This was the custom of the world back then to have more than one wives. God ordained that one wife should be for one man, mm -hmm. one man for one woman. Just like Adam and Eve. But oh, in, in Hebrews, I mean Romans 12, 1 and 2, the second verse tells us that we ought not to conform to this world. We don't transform by the renewing. The renewing of it. It's not everything we see out there is for us as children we of love God. Love not the world. We love not the world. First John 2 15. Mm -hmm. So it was the custom back then for the people, the heathen, to have more than one wife. And so his wife encouraged him to take unto himself another wife. You think this went down well, friends? No. It was a problem in that household. Mm -hmm. Let us go on. So let us pick up now at verse um, 6. Let us pick up at but verse Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. So, 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 see, you know, problem rising. Mm -hmm. Troubling the home now because Agar now start to mock his wife Sarah. Oh, you can't have any children and I have. You know, you she despised verse four said she despised it. She was despised, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Yes, so mm -hmm. she started to mock her that mm -hmm. I bear a seed, you can't have any children. You know, so let's go on. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain. Oh, sorry, verse six. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, I made it in thy hand, do to her as it pleased thee. Yes, and so when... the, the problem in the home now, so Abram has said, You fix it. Mm -hmm. Do anything you want to do with her. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. So, and Sarai, and when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Yes. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain of the way to shore. And he said, Agar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, 
I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. Right. And Sarai. Verse, verse 9 says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit yes. thyself unto her hands. And the verse we want to zoom in, it, it's getting close. It says here, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. Who is the angel speaking to here? Agar. Agar. Mm -hmm. huh. So remember the covenant was made between Abraham and God that would have come through his seed, Lines, yeah. his, his whole bowels. bowels yeah. That's between him and Sarai. Mm -hmm. So now we are seeing that a child is in the picture, but is through his helper, Agar. Mm -hmm. So the our angel maid. is, yes, our maid is saying he will multiply the seed of Ishmael that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Mm -hmm. Verse 11, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name what? Ishmael, yes. because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Sure. Read verse 12, please. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. All right. So what we're seeing that the, the seed of Abraham mm -hmm. and Hagar shall become a wild man. Mm -hmm. And his hand shall be against every man's hand. And every man's hand shall be against his hand. Do you know who, which set of people in the world today are the descendants of Ishmael? Do you know? They are the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are the Muslims. Muslims. So the Muslims are the descendants of Ishmael. Please make a note of that. Mm -hmm. All right, share with us that quote for me, please. From, okay, I think it's, um, no, I think I have it here. Prophet, Peter, some prophet. Yes, this one. Abraham's early teaching had not been without effect upon Ishmael, but the influence of his wives resulted in establishing idolatry in his family. You see that, friends? So Abraham taught Ishmael about the God of heaven. However, he grew up, and having more than one wives, their, 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 those wives turned Ishmael's heart from the true God of Abraham of heaven that his father Abraham worshipped and they turned his heart into idolatry. Please bear that in mind. Separated from his father and embittered by the strife and contention of a home destitute of the love and fear of God, Ishmael was driven to choose the wild, marauding life of the desert chief, his hand against every man and every man's hand against him. Genesis 16 verse 12. Read on. In his latter days, he repented of his evil ways and returned to his father's God. But the stamp of character given to his posterity remained. The powerful nation descended from him were a turbulent, Eden people who were ever an annoyance and affliction to the descendants of Isaac. Okay, so we are seeing that Ishmael in his latter days, repented and he returned to the worshipping of the true God that his father Abraham worshipped. Yes. So my Muslim friends, my Muslim brothers and sisters, I appeal to you, follow in the footsteps of Ishmael by returning to the true worship of the God of Abraham, which is who? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And this message is not to condemn anyone. We are speaking from a place of love. So I know that Muslims reject Jesus. Mm -hmm. But here we are seeing that Ishmael repented. He turned from idolatry and he worshipped Jesus, who is our creator. The true God mm. of heaven. Amen. So my Muslim brother and sister, I beg of you, please turn to the written word which will lead you to Christ, Jesus Christ, the living word. Mm -hmm. Did you know 
that there's a prophecy in the book of Revelation 9 that refers to the Muslims. Back then, they were called the Ottoman Empire or the Mohammedans or the Sarsians. Yes, friends. Let's go to Revelation chapter 9. But before we even go there, the last part of the quote says that this, um, it says here that in his latter days, he repented of his evil ways and returned to his father's God. But the stamp of character given to his prosperity remained. So we want to read a quote now about influence. So as parents know, we need to be careful what? Of our influence. Of our influence. Our on our children. Yeah. And we need to ensure we are training our children in the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Because we can do something wrong that influenced them. And we repent. But because of that wrong thing that we did, it leads them astray and they'll be lost. So it's best for us to know the will of God, to do it and teach our children. And here it says, The powerful nation descended from him, Ishmael, which are the Muslims, right? Were a turbulent, even people who were ever an annoyance and affliction to the descendants of Isaac, which are the Jews. And we soon speak more about that. Read the quote about influence, please. And this is from the book, Great Controversy. Under Facing Life's Record. Every man's work passes in review before God and is registered for faithfulness or unfaithfulness. Opposite each name in the books of heaven is entered with terrible exactness, every wrong word, every selfish act, every unfulfilled duty, and every secret sin, which every, which every artful wit, every artful dissembling. Heaven sent warnings of reproves neglected, wasted, wasted moments, unimproved opportunities, the influence exerted for good or for evil. The influence what? The it's influence exerted for good, good or for evil. Or for evil. With its far-reaching results. You hear that, friends? With its what? Far-reaching far results. results. And what's the last part? All are chronicled by the recording angel. Friends, sin does not only affect the person who do, does the sin. In other words, sin does not only affect the doer or the one who commits sin. It can also affect generations to come. So what we're seeing in the world with this war between Israel and Hamas, it's a result of Abraham's sin of taking a second wife which bore that child Ishmael. Yes, friends, and aren't we still seeing the effects of sin? No. today in our world yeah. that adam and eve committed mm -hmm. so what is this telling us we need to be careful of what we do and hebrews 12 1 tells us we should what? lay aside, aside every weight of sin that easily besets us exactly and in romans six twenty three tells us the wages, wages of sin, sin is death but the, the gift, gift of, of god, god is eternal life through and Jesus. zachariah 4 and verse 6 says what not by my might or by my power what but is by thy spirit. spirit so we can live a life free from sin mm -hmm. ephesians 5 27 tells us that god wants to present himself a glorious church free of pot and not, not having any spot or wrinkle or any blemish Blameless. and in jude 24 we are told he wants to present us faultless mm -hmm. yes friends mm -hmm. so the whole message of this plan of salvation Read the sanctuary and where Jesus is now in heaven is a getting rid of sin. sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to overcome sin in our lives, friends. And please bear in mind, we will be held accountable mm -hmm. for the sins that we commit. And even some sins that we have um, got forgiveness for, there's what? The consequence that we still have to suffer. I'm happy for First John. 1 and verse 7 that says it is the blood of Jesus that what cleanses us from all yeah, sin and in verse 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful, faithful and, and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all not some all unrighteousness mm -hmm. in Romans 6 verse 4 it tells us that when we are buried with Christ through baptism and when we rise 
we should what? Walk in a newness of life. Second Corinthians 5 17 tells us that therefore if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new, new creature. creation. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. The old has to come, yeah? Exactly. So God wants to transform us, friends. And read for me, please. Before we go to Revelation 9, Acts 4, verse 10 to 12. And St. John. Acts 4, 10 to 12. Yes. And St. John 14, verse 6. Because we are lifting up Jesus in this message today. He said in John 12 and verse 32, And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. So my Muslim brothers and sisters, we are lifting up Jesus to you, who is the only source of salvation. Amen. John 3 and verse 16 tells us that for God so loved the world, is out of love he gave Jesus his son. His only begotten son. His only begotten son that whosoever, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Jew, a Gentile, uh, whichever race, whosoever believeth in Amen. Jesus, shall not perish but have what everlasting life and god sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and john 10 and verse 10 tells us that the thief cometh not but forward to steal and to kill and to destroy jesus is saying i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly jesus came my muslim brothers jesus came my muslim sisters to offer us eternal Turn life on. read from me my sister acts 10 acts 4 10 to 12 be it known unto you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom you crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Amen. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. So there is only one name under heaven, one name on this earth, by which Every human being can be saved. And what is that name? Jesus' name. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. That's St. John 14, verse 6. That's the next text I have here to share. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. By me. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, friends, we are here to give you Jesus. Amen. Please, embrace him before it's too late. Yes. So as I was saying earlier, there is a prophecy in Revelation 9. Under the seven trumpets, the last three trumpets are three woes. The first woe, the fifth trumpet, had to do with the Mohammedans, the, the, the Ottoman Empire, or the Muslims as we know them today. Mm -hmm. The second woe has to do with the Muslims, the Mohammedans, the Ottoman Empire. And the third, I believe, will also have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. However... We are told that this prophecy was fulfilled to the very T. So why am I drawing your attention here? I believe every Muslim should be a Christian. Yes. I believe every Muslim, my Muslim brothers and sisters, we love you. And Jesus loves and us And Jesus too. loves you even yes. more. Yes. And he died for you too. Yes. And guess what? He's coming back mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But there's a work that you... And us need to do in overcoming sin in our yes, lives yes. so we can stand with him in his kingdom when he comes. Mm -hmm. So, it's a deep and long study. So, I'm just going to touch about two verses. So, under the fifth trumpet, Revelation 9 and verse 5, it says, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it strikes at a man. I am going to post some links in this video description with a very popular YouTuber who explained this beautifully. And I'm encouraging you to watch the video. But I'll just share with you from this unlocking revelation because in the interest of time, we don't want to overwhelm you with information. 
So we are talking about now this five months. It says here, if a five month time period brought to view in the fifth trumpet demonstrates the accuracy of our application to the Muslim forces. Yes, friends, five months are equal to 150 days. Mm -hmm. And you can find that in Genesis yes, with, with Noah. Yes, and the flood. Mm -hmm. So five months equal to what? 150 days and Ezekiel 14 34 Ezekiel 4 6 tells us that a day is symbolic of a year in prophecy mm -hmm. so 150 days will actually be what 150 years mm -hmm. so this is what 150 literal years according to this prophecy the Muslim armies swarming like locusts and the Bible refers to them as locusts would war against the Eastern Roman Empire for 150 year period without total conquest for they would be given power to torment but not to kill. Bible students have been astonished at the accuracy of this prophecy. Just as predicted, Uthman, the first king of the Muslims, made his initial attack against the Eastern Roman Empire. What year? 1299 AD. What month? What date? July 27 of that year. Yes, friends. And from that date, the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman Turks, did torment the Eastern Roman Empire for how long? 150 years. 150 years without complete victory until 1449. So if we add 150 years, to 1299, what do we get? 144. 149. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Alright, as I said, we can't go through everything. Please watch the video. Uh, 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 that I will place the link in the description. Okay, go with me to Revelation 9 and verse 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men all right so let's break that down here it says at the conclusion of the 150 years of torment in 1449 another time period would mark the conquest of the turks against the eastern emperor but before we go on let us just back up to what was taking place in the world at that time if you go back to Matthew 24, Jesus spoke of what? A great tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's persecution of the church in both papal, pagan and papal form. And then Jesus said what? There will be earthquake in, in Revelation 6. But in Matthew 24, it mentioned the sun mm -hmm. will not give her light. The moon will not give her light. And the stars will fall from heaven. In Revelation 6. Verse 12 onward, you see where there will be a great earthquake and then you will see the powers of heaven shaking in connection with the sun, the moon and the stars. So let's put some dates to this now. What here was that great earthquake? November 1st, 1755 is known as the Lisbon earthquake which took place in where? Portugal. And that earthquake was felt in Africa and many other countries and even in the Caribbean and then God said after that the sun would refuse there will be a dark day mm -hmm. and that was May 19 1780 yes friends in the middle day the place just became pitch black and the falls went to roost all of this grabbed the people's attention and they were thinking Jesus is coming because those are signs of Jesus is coming mm -hmm. And then that said night, the moon became as blood, May 19, 1780. Which other sign Jesus spoke of after? The stars would fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. And this was November 13, 1833. So this prophecy now that we are looking at, we the Muslims, took place August 11, 1840. Are you following me? So this great Advent awakening movement under the Philadelphia church, which is what? The, the, the sixth church in Revelation 2 and 3. Yes, because after Philadelphia came Laodicea, 
this brotherly love. Mm. This was a great awakening that took place in America and then it spread throughout the world. Because what? The first angel message must go to what? Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people every nation mm -hmm. you see that friends mm -hmm. so the first angel message went around the world so this was the great advent awakening and then this now prophecy that we are telling you about real muslims was studied by josiah lich and it was published in the newspapers so 1833 when the stars fell from heaven seven years later was this fulfillment and can you imagine when people pick up the newspaper and they read that the muslims are going to lose power August 11, 1840, and when that day came and he fulfilled the prophecy, atheists gave their hearts to Jesus. Because they realized that the word of God is true. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So my Muslim brothers and sisters, this mm -hmm. is the book of all books. Yes. I recommend this book to you. Please study it mm -hmm. and pray God will send his Holy Spirit to interpret his truth to you. The true and living God is not Allah. It is Jesus Christ, Amen. the one who made heaven Amen. and earth. The first angel message said we should worship him. The one who created heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. I recommend to you Jesus. We recommend to you Jesus. Please, friends, embrace him before it is too late. So we are seeing here that this prophecy is going to show us now. When the Muslim lost power. And please go and check your history because it's all about you, my Muslim brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So here it tells us that one year is equal to 360 years mm -hmm. in Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. One month is 30 days. One year is one year. One day is one year. One hour is 15 days. So one hour is 15 days. You will divide 24 hours into 361 year you divide that by 24 and that's how you end up with 15 days that gives us a total of 391 years and 15 days so we have to add that now to what year what was the last year we mentioned 14 what 49 all right in exact fulfillment of this prophecy the emperor of constantinople yielded the emperor's independence to the Turks at the conclusion of the 150 years of torment in 1449. Mm -hmm. Then the Ottoman Muslim Empire continued its reign for 391 years. Bible students of the 1800s figured the prophecy from Gibeon's beginning date of the 150 year period of what? July 27, 1299. And moving forward, 150 years, they came to July 27, 1449. So from July 27, 1299, plus 150 years in the future, it takes us to July 27, 1449. So moving forward now from 1449, July 27, add 391 years and 15 days, it takes us to August 11, 1840. It is here that they expected to witness the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Just as they figured, after the 391 year rule on August 11, 1840, the Muslim Empire surrendered its independence to the European nations. Just as the Eastern Roman Empire surrendered its power 391 years earlier. Look at this. This is from the book inside Daniel and Revelation and this is page 179 it says for an hour day month and year this prophetic number equals 391 years and 15 days and it is a remarkable bible prophecy which reached its fulfillment on August 11 1840 this prophetic period extended from July 27 1449 to August 11 1840 on the 11th of August, 1840, on board a ship, the Turkish Sultan signed a document, yes friends, which forever ended the power of the Turkish Sultan. This authority 
over the domains of the former Ottoman Empire, including modern Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, had been transferred to four European nations, England, Austria, Prussia, and Russia. Prior to that time, the Ottomans had continued attacks on the eastern portion of the former Roman Emperor. Friends, he who doesn't know his history is bound to repeat it. This is all Bible prophecy, friends. So I can bank on this book. I can trust in this word, which is the word of God. So my Muslim friends, this is a prophecy that prophesied about you and your people back then that you would have lost for August 11, 1840. And it was fulfilled to the T. So if that was fulfilled, St. John 14, 1 to 3 will also be fulfilled. Which says what? Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus is saying, and if he go, he will come, come again. again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. So Jesus died for my Muslim friends. Please, accept him before it is too late. So, let us move on. So we are seeing that the descendants of Ishmael are Muslims. Alright, so let us look at the promised seed. The promised seed. Go with me in Genesis chapter 17 and pick up at verse 15, my dear wife. Genesis 17, verse 15. Now we have to move on in the interest of time. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt call her name, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Verse 16. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. You hear that, friends? Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then? Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Mm -hmm. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son. Indeed. So God is emphasizing it. You know. mm -hmm. So who is the promised seed? I hope you're, 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 Isaac. Let's go on. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. So what would be the name of the child that 90-year-old Sarah was going to have? Isaac. What was the name of the son that Abraham at 100 years old was going to have? Isaac. Isaac. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. What the word says And here? I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So hold on now, friends. The word of God is plain. So here we are seeing God is saying, Abraham, you and your wife Sarah, you are going to have a son. His name shall be Isaac. And I will make a covenant. With who? Isaac. Isaac. Mm -hmm. So the covenant was not made with Ishmael. No. So who is the right heir of this land? Isaac. Isaac, descendants, which are who? He's a promised child. The Jews. Yes. You see the point? Mm -hmm. So friends, when you look at Ishmael and Isaac, and both of, let's say the, the two of them have a son. Those sons are related, not you. What would we refer to those sons as? Cousins. Isn't that so? They are brothers, you know. Remember, Ishmael and Isaac are brothers. Mm -hmm. So Ishmael's son will be the nephew for Isaac. Isaac's son will be the nephew for Ishmael. So that would make Ishmael's son, Isaac's son, cousins. Mm -hmm. So my brothers and sisters, the Muslims, the Jews, you are related, you are family, so we need to stop fighting against each other mm -hmm. and just embrace Jesus because even now, all right, let's go on before we move on. Verse 21, just pick up at verse 21. Verse 21, all right, my pick up, covenant. Pick up at 20 and 21. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, I have heard thee, behold, 
I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. So God is saying, you know, I will bless Ishmael mm -hmm. and I will multiply him. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. So God is saying, Ishmael, I am going to bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you fruitful. Yes. Multiply you. Yes. Sorry. I will make you a great nation. Mm -hmm. But... Verse 21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. But what? My God covenant. is saying my covenant mm -hmm. I will establish with you. Isaac, Isaac mm -hmm. not Ishmael. Yes. In spite of Ishmael being blessed and fruitful and become a, a great nation, mm -hmm. God is saying the covenant was established with who? Isaac. Yes, because that was the union that God blessed. Abraham was the one who took on to himself another wife. Are you following me? So the covenant that was made was made with Isaac. So the descendants of Isaac would be who? The Jews. Mm -hmm. So who is the rightful heir of that land? The mm -hmm. Jews. Mm -hmm. But who know? Friends, I don't want to speak part of us. Maybe some will not understand it. You all are family. The Jews and the Muslims. You are family. You are related. You are both the seed of Abraham. Let's go on. So, God is saying here that he would have made his covenant with Isaac. Mm -hmm. But sad to say, the Jews reject Jesus just like the Muslims. Who is behind all of this? Satan is the deceiver. Mm -hmm. The Jews believe in the Torah and I'm sure they have the writings of Isaiah. And it was prophesied in Isaiah 53 that what? Jesus would come on the scene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here it says he would come on the scene in verse 3. He is despised mm -hmm. and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him smitten, stricken of God and afflicted, but he was wounded. wounded for our transgressions. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you you died for me, a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Friends. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So if the Jews, my Lovely Jews, mm -hmm. my brothers, my mm -hmm. sisters, please study the word of God. Isaiah 53 predicted that Jesus would have come and suffered and died. Mm -hmm. He would not have come in a palace as a king. And friends, if you study the prophecy of Daniel 9, you would have recognized it predicted the very year the Messiah would have come on the scene and become baptized. The 2300 day prophecy explained in Daniel 9 showed the very year the Messiah would have died. Mm -hmm. Cut off mm -hmm. for you, my Jew brother, for you, my Jew sister, mm -hmm. for us, my dear wife. Mm -hmm. He died for all that we might Thank live. You. Thank you, Lord. Please read that quote for me. That tells us that a curse was placed upon Daniel 9. It suits the policy of Satan that men should retain the forms of religion if but the spirit of vital godliness is lacking. After their rejection of the gospel, the Jews continued zealously to maintain their ancient rights. That, friends? They rigorously preserved their national exclusiveness, while they themselves could not be admit, could not but admit that the presence of God was no longer manifest among them. Mm. The prophecy of Daniel pointed so unmistakably to the time of Messiah's coming mm -hmm. and so directly foretold his death that they discouraged its study. And finally, the rabbis pronounce a curse on all who should attempt a computation of the time. In blindness and impenitence, the people of Israel during succeeding centuries have stood indifferent to the gracious offers of salvation. Unmindful of the blessing of the gospel, a solemn and fearful warning of the danger of rejecting light from heaven. Wow, so it is dangerous 
for us to reject light, light from heaven. From heaven. So what are we seeing here? That the rabbis place a curse upon the computation or the study of Daniel 9 that explains the very year Jesus would have been baptized, which was AD 27. They place a curse upon Daniel 9 that explains the 2300 days. And I'll put a link to a video in the description down below that you can watch that explains the 2300 days prophecy. So they put a place a curse upon mm -hmm. it that would have explained the very year that Jesus would have been crucified. Going back to Isaiah 53, it says in verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him, the sin of all. Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He yet he opened up his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus and it was fulfilled to the T. Look at this in verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no oh. violence, neither was, was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord Jesus, it, 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 it pleased God to bruise him. Mm. He hath put him to a grief when no. thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Mm -hmm. And my friends, the Jews offered sacrificial offering, which was a sacrifice for sin. Yes, friends, the feast of Passover that you celebrate on the 14th day of Nisan at 3 o'clock, Jesus Christ fulfilled that feast day, being the ultimate lamb who was slain on the 14th day of the first month at 3 o'clock in the evening. Go and study Exodus 12 and link it to St. John 11. You will see that the Passover lamb was chosen on the 10th day of the first month and set aside you will see in St. John, few days before the Passover, Jesus walked no more openly among the Jews because the Jews met and decided that he should die. And Jesus was captured, tried as we just showed you, and then he made his grave with the wicked. My Jews, my brother Jew, my sister Jew, Jesus the Messiah came already. The second coming that we are looking for is not to establish a sanctuary in, in, in Jerusalem. But this body temple is the sanctuary that we are to prepare for Jesus' second coming. The Messiah of all Messiahs. Mm -hmm. Here it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. He hath put him to grief. Mm -hmm. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be what? Satisfied, Satisfied by his knowledge. Oh yes, friends. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So my Jew brother, my Jew sister, Jesus died for you. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. And he wants and, to save you. And he wants to save you. Mm -hmm. Will you give your heart to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Won't you, my Muslim brothers and sisters, my Jews, brothers and sisters, give your heart to Jesus. Friends, Jesus is coming again. And there is only one name under heaven by which we can be saved. May God bless you as you watch this video. May it be a means to encourage you to go back to the word, the written word, which will lead you mm -hmm. to Jesus Christ. The living word. Will you pray for us? Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Thank you so very much for your word of truth. You love us with an everlasting love, and you wills not that we should perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Please save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And friends, please read Romans 11 for yourself. But let me just share one more scripture, which is Galatians 3 and verse 29, which says, Galatians 3 and verse 29. All right, let me just read verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if he be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So when you study the 2300 days, you recognize the first 70 weeks prophecy ended in 34 AD at the stoning of Stephen. The Jews were the chosen nation to take the gospel to the world. But because the Jews rejected Jesus, and some of them rejected Jesus because some embraced Jesus, but majority of them rejected Jesus, the gospel was now taken from the Jews and given to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Let me just read that quickly in Acts chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 13, and we pick up at verse um, 40, 40, 40. 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Who saw it? The Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and the religious proselytes, meaning those who convert from one religion to another, followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to gather to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Note verse 46, friends. Then Paul and Barnabas walked bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you, the Jews. But seeing he put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So thank God there's hope for us. Amen. We can all be saved mm. because if we believe in Jesus, we are now what? Abraham seed mm. and heir according kingdom. to the promise. Amen. But in Romans 11, it is saying that they can be grafted back in. Mm. So there is still hope. And while Jesus is ministering in the most holy place, mm -hmm. there is hope. Amen. So we appeal to you, please, accept Jesus, who is the only way, the truth, and the life, and be saved before it is too late. God bless you. God bless you.